in the South, and I can only speak for the South, cooking is an art that is passed down from generation to generation. We begin to learn when we're children, and we truly never stop learning. Something mom taught me early on was how to make a great chicken salad. And that chicken salad was the foundation of our first little home business, The Bag Lady. We quickly found out that little business needed a bigger home. So we took a leap of faith and opened our first restaurant, which was way harder than running a small business out of our house. And that first year was just a uh, blur. It was the longest, quickest time of my life. She's always been a fantastic cook. You know, mom said many times, I didn't have any skills, all I could do was cook. And she had my brother and I who were just sitting around. So she said, this is my way out. I didn't understand it then, but I have two children now that I would dedicate the rest of my life to ensure that they were good. So mom felt, even though I was 21 and had one foot in the ne'er-do-well, it was mom's responsibility to take care of me and to take care of my brother. It's a little tiny princess. And so that's what started all this. Okay, y'all gonna have to run on now. Mom said, I'm gonna give my boys a better chance. And I'm gonna do it through my cooking. And um, that's how it started. Okay, we're gonna make a fabulous stock with those bones. Well, hey, friends. <laughs> it's me, Paula, and I finally got a day in my kitchen to cook. I'm so happy to look up and see that y'all are there with me today. So why don't we go back to the thing that really put us on the map when we opened the Lady and Sons. Are you up to frying some chicken with me? Everybody loves fried chicken. I so hope y'all are enjoying the show. And if you do, be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you'll never miss a video. And we'll be right back after the break. My mom is the best at it. Takes me back to childhood, just like so many other people. In the South, there's a saying, and it's she danced with the one that brung you, and the one that brung us is chicken. I probably owe, besides my mother, the the greatest amount of gratitude to the chicken. But I think what makes my moms the best is the fact that moms make the best everything. You know, I like to take my chicken out and let it sit on the counter for about 45 minutes to an hour. I like to kind of bring it down to room temperature because when we add it to our, our hot oil, if it's ice cold, it's gonna drop that temperature and that could really give you soggy chicken. So just remember that tip. I'm not doing that today because I'm a little short on time, but you'll find that that will really give you a nicer uh, fried chicken if you'll do that. So grandma always taught me, I've said it a hundred times, when I was having chicken for dinner, Paul Ann seasoned your chicken that morning, honey, put it in the refrigerator so it can just drink up all those seasonings that you put on it. And you know, I have found today, I really have to go out and hunt very, very hard to find a two or two and a half pound chicken. Uh, they're feeding them something that causes those chickens to get so big, so quick. And a small chicken to this day is still the best. My mother always said, Paula, don't go bigger than a two and a half pound chicken. But that's a tall order for today. But these breasts are so big. Look, they're the size of my face. That's a breast. So I think that I'm gonna cut this breast in two, which will work just fine for me because a lot of people like just the white meat. So that'll give me like four breasts instead of two. So that'll work out great. And I always liked the white meat. I would get the breast. My father would get the breast. And my brother would get a chicken leg or something, or a chicken wing. And so it was, uh, it was a momentous day 
for my father when he had to learn to eat dark meat because my brother had found out about the chicken breast and it was only one fryer. So I would get one, my brother would get one, and then daddy would get skinnier because he would get a chicken leg or a chicken wing. Years ago when I was in my very first little restaurant and it was called The Lady back then. And we did taste test after taste test and this seemed to be everybody's favorite. I've got three eggs, three beaten eggs, a little water, and now I'm gonna add a cup of my hot sauce. And I know right now you're probably saying, whoa, Paula, that's gonna be so hot we can't eat it. But it's really not. You don't have any of the heat, but just the flavor. That's all you're gonna have. So we're gonna dunk our chicken. And I really like, if I have time, uh, y'all, I like to go ahead and put this in the refrigerator and let this sit for a couple of hours. You know, and it's funny, my grandmother taught me so much along the way. I mean, really, basically, three quarters of what I know about the kitchen. But I don't fry my chicken like my grandmother did. That's strange. I remember her chicken like it was yesterday. Because it's the best. And she would do it. See my mouth just watering while I'm talking about it. And she would do it uh, old school Southern style in a cast iron skillet. You know, it's like Sunday morning, fried chicken. It's like these, these smells bring me back. Fried green tomatoes, my mama would do. Now you can see the way I'm placing it in my skillet, y'all. I'm turning the legs in opposite direction. Your touch, your smell, your sight. Look at this beautiful chicken. And people will say, Paula, what makes your chicken so good? It touches it, it gets everything. Have you ever been in your kitchen and frying something and it was quiet and it was peaceful? Hear that sound? What does it remind you of? <laughs> well, I can tell you what it reminds me of. It reminds me of um, the love that my mother and my grandmother and my aunts had for the wonderful art of cooking, uh, the love among our family for each other. Uh, in fact, the love my grandmother had for her customers that came into her restaurant at River Bend when I was a small child. Uh, takes me back to those safe years, you know what I mean? When your feet were under your mother's table and your daddy's table and your grandmother and granddaddy's table when you knew nothing could hurt you because they were gonna protect you and keep you safe, you didn't have a worry in this world except what was your next new swimsuit gonna look like. I hope y'all are enjoying the show and I wanna hear from you. Tell me what recipes or videos you'd like to see me make by just leaving a short comment below. Now, let's get back to the show, y'all. Well, everything with food is ingrained in families. Everybody's family heritage is tied through food of some kind. Southern food just happens to encompass the largest amount of space on the map. I like my cast iron pan to be full of chicken. It's so hard to get, just cook two or three pieces, y'all. You, you, you just can't get it regulated. So, you know, don't worry about there's only two of you. Go ahead and fry that whole chicken because I'm here to tell you, honey, makes the best chicken salad you've ever seen. Just pull off that crust, take that meat off the bone, and that seasoning is already there. Add some celery and onions and mayonnaise, boiled egg, and you at the finish line. Here's something my mom has always said about cooking, is that she loves the immediate gratification that she gets from serving somebody a meal, and I can 100% relate to that. 
Some people eat to live. Some people live to eat. And I have to say, I really, I really love cooking for those that live to eat. <laughs> I think mealtime can be a very relaxing time when everybody's guards down. It's just a good place to be because that should be one of the best times of the day is the times that you sit down and share a meal with your family. It just doesn't get any better than that. Just doesn't get any better than that. You know, most of your grandmothers and grandfathers will have cast iron. Well, whatever you do, don't throw it out. Scrub it good with just hot water and then grease it up and you can put it in a paper sack and throw it in the closet and let that cast iron drink back up that grease. Don't use all, use a solid shortening. Or you can uh, coat it with your solid shortening, put it in the oven, just leave it in there, and every time you're in your kitchen piddling, turn your oven on and just let that shortening bake into it. And once again, you'll have a great seasoned pan. And this round of chicken is about to get ready, y'all. My mama's fried chicken is that perfect blend of crunchy, yet succulent and juicy and moist and delicious. And it's just hot and crunchy. And it's my grandmother's chicken and it's my days in the trailer and it's the times with my father eating a chicken leg and all Benny. I mean, fried chicken is one of those things that it's such an important part of the Southern table. It's really the main attraction. The smell, the aroma just takes me back in time and it's a flavor that's affected not only my family, but a lot of people. We've shared a lot of tears over fried chicken at our restaurant. See, that breast is already looking really, really good. And this is something else that we do at the restaurant. We take our, our, our tongs, and we'll go right down the side of each side of that bone to open that chicken up to make sure it gets good and done. And you'll want to do that not on the skin side, but on the skinless side. See that? See what I'm doing? The water from the chicken is coming out and causing that fryer to just sizzle. So we are almost there, kitty. I think it's done. I'd say it's been in there a good 14 minutes. And, but I'm just gonna let this cook and I kind of got a mess here, y'all. So I'm gonna be cleaning this up and uh, then I think that needs to try on my set of lips. <laughs> what you think? See if my lips fit that leg. <laughs> I so hope y'all are enjoying the show. And if you do, be sure to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you'll never miss a video. And we'll be right back after the break. True Southern food is very hard to prepare. And you don't find it everywhere. Unless you do it at home. And folks really don't have the time anymore because I think there's less hours in the day now than there was 20 years ago. All I have to do if I'm having a bad Good day morning. is get in my car and go Good down morning. to the restaurant. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Those people 
those guests that come in the restaurant. They are full of nothing but love and excitement about finally getting to the Lady and Sons here in Savannah. When I'm away from Savannah and talking about her, the one word that keeps coming to my mind is magical. There's something magical about this town. And the friendliness. Yes. I mean, every Southern hospitality the, is still alive. Staff. You tell the family back home that I sent love to them. And y'all have a wonderful Thank stay. You, so you want to take me home, you can. <laughs> OK. <She won't> mind. <laughs> Celebrating my birthday. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and they pour their love out to me so freely. And if I've still got a problem after greeting those people and chatting with them, this is too fun. <laughs> and there's something bad wrong with me. Well, back in Albany, I remember it's so funny. Mom would always fry, she'd buy a fryer, because they were, gosh, back then they were probably a dollar. You know, you'd get a whole fryer, and Mom would break it down, and she'd fry it in the pan. To me, my mom's fried chicken is the best in the world. But you know what really is important to it is, I mentioned that she would do it in the cast iron skillet, and cast iron skillets are, they're passed down over generations. These things last forever and they become so well seasoned, they take on this wonderful flavor over time. That really is what makes fried chicken great. If your mom or your grandmother made fried chicken for you as a kid in a cast iron skillet, then it had all that seasoning from maybe 100 years past in it. I think that it's just a, um, it's one of those things where my mama makes better fried chicken than your mama. No, she doesn't. My mama makes better fried chicken than yours. But I think I have a legitimate claim. So, you know, I, I told you a minute ago, I think it's time to see if my lips fit this leg. Mmm. It's so good. So daggum good, y'all. Mmm. Brings back so many memories. You know, I... I remember that first Wednesday in our first little restaurant. It was located in the Best Western. The boys kept saying, we need to do a buffet, Mama. We need to do a buffet. So I said, okay, we'll try it. We'll do hump day buffet on Wednesdays. We didn't have enough seats. <laughs> there were so many folks there. And they were there for this. The one way that I knew that I could show my family I loved them was to fry them some chicken. And my mom would just make it so good. You know, I never knew growing up when it came time to eat that we didn't have a lot of money. There might have been other times, but not when it was time to sit down at the table. We were always rich when we sat down to eat. And all these years later, it still reminds me of the way I showed my love for him. Might not could buy them the newest toy, but I could fry them some chicken. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. I need a piece of white bread and some hot sauce. <laughs> well, that's it, y'all. Been a wonderful, fun day to be in my kitchen with my friends. I thank y'all so much for staying with me and hanging in there with me while I got caught up on some cooking. And I hope y'all have a wonderful day. 
And you know, I always send you love and best dishes. Till we meet again. Hey y'all, it's Paula Dean. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be alerted when I post a video. Love and best dishes, y'all.